Algiers is a large district located in the city of New Orleans that stretches across 12 miles of the western bank of the Mississippi River in Orleans Parish. From downtown New Orleans to Algiers, expected commute time ranges from 10 to 15 minutes depending on traffic. The Algiers community as a whole is rather large. However, only a small portion of Algiers, called Algiers Point, contains the main tourist attractions, including the world's longest continuous ferry route and landmarks that date back to before the Civil War. Established in 1719, Algiers is considered to be the second oldest neighborhood in New Orleans. Spanning along 12 miles of the Mississippi opposite the French Quarter, the land initially consisted of cypress swamps and prairie lands and was home to Chickasaw and Choctaw Indians. The French were the first settlers in Algiers, leaving a strong French influence that can be seen today. The Spanish settled in Algiers in 1769 and began clearing the land and building plantations along the Mississippi River. During the American Revolutionary War, the Spanish allowed Acadians from France to settle on the land known today as Algiers. Consequently, the Acadians became one of the more predominant ethnic groups in the land and are now referred to as Cajuns. France gained back the land at the end of the Revolutionary War, only to have it sold to the United States and the Louisiana Purchase two years later. After the Louisiana Purchase, immigrants from Germany, Ireland, Italy, and various other Europeans began to settle in Algiers. In 1812, Bartholomew de Verge and his family built their plantation home on the land that is now known as Algiers Point. The plantation functioned as a temporary holding site for enslaved Africans and Haitians, where they rested and bathed before being ferried across the Mississippi River to be sold in the French Quarter to local landowners. The presence of Africans and Haitians in the early development of Algiers is responsible for the present-day voodoo culture seen in the town and the rest of New Orleans. The route that the first ferry took in 1827 is still followed today and holds the record for the longest continuous ferry route in the United States. In 1850, the railroad made its appearance in Algiers, making the city a major railroad center for over 100 years. The railroad in Algiers also served as a target for the attack by Union troops during the Civil War. Before valuable property full of supplies could be seized and used by Union troops, Algiers residents set fire to their own land. After the Civil War ended, Algiers became an official part of New Orleans as the 15th Ward, a decision that is still a topic of discussion among Algiers officials. Algiers residents show that 50% of the population is married and 50% of the population is single. African Americans are the dominant population at 74% of the total races, and females outnumber males at 54%. The median age of the Algiers community is 36. Statistics show that most of the Algiers residents are Louisiana-born natives compared to out-of-state birthplaces. In addition, the language most commonly spoken by the Algiers residents is English, spoken by 96.8% of the population. According to the United States Census Bureau, the average wage of households in Louisiana was about $44,000 in 2013. The yearly income of over half of the households in Algiers is less than $30,000. The second most common yearly income falls within the range of thirty to $75,000 and represents the salary of about 32% of the households in Algiers. Only 7% of the households in Algiers are greater than $75,000 annually. The Algiers education data represents the highest level of education attained by the residents in Algiers and is based on the data collected in the 2015 census. Statistics show that 5% of the population has a graduate degree, 13% of the population have a bachelor's or associate's degree, 54% of the population have at least a high school diploma, and 28% of the population have some high school education or less. The employment status of the Algiers community shows that only 5% of the total population is unemployed, and the three most common occupations are in education slash health care at 22%, arts and entertainment at 14%, and retail at 13%. The average home in Algiers costs about $275,000 or $77 per square foot. The median house is about 2,187 square feet, and the majority of the houses in Algiers are at least 20 years old, if not older. In fact, only about 4% of the homes in Algiers were built after 1990. 40% of the residents of Algiers are homeowners, and 60% live in rental homes. The renter-occupied units cost less than $600. The average temperature of the city of Algiers, Louisiana is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, with temperatures peaking in the months of July and August, and low temperatures seen in the months of January and February. 
The city experiences between 54 and 56 rainy days per year with an average rainfall of around 64 inches per year. Having said that, the majority of the city of New Orleans, which includes Algiers, sits at an elevation of around three feet. While this isn't necessarily under sea level, when comparing to other areas around the state, this is a low elevation. This puts the city at risk for flooding from big storms and or hurricanes. The community of Algiers, Louisiana receives its water supply from the Mississippi River. The water is received at the New Orleans Sewerage and Water Board Algiers site and is treated and checked before pumping out to other communities on the West Bank. Water checks are performed at this facility throughout the day to ensure that the water is safe to drink by checking the water pH, water hardness, and for any contaminants in the water. The New Orleans Department of Sanitation oversees waste disposal in Algiers. Trash pickup is performed twice a week and the rotation depends on the resident's address. Some areas of Algiers have their trash picked up on a Tuesday-Friday rotation while others have their trash picked up on a Monday-Thursday rotation. Recycling is currently picked up on Mondays by Richard's Disposal throughout Algiers. The city of Algiers has an air quality index of between 34 and 48 depending on the time of day. This means that the air quality is satisfactory and poses little to no risk to residents. Air quality checks are performed by the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality throughout the day. Monitoring sites are located around the region and around the city of New Orleans. Energy is provided to the residents of Algiers by the company Intergy and is widely known to be a low cost for Algiers residents. Previously, average costs for the residents were reported to be around $79 for 100 kilowatt hours. However, the Times-Picayune reports that residents saw a marginal increase to around $104 for in 2014. For some families and residents, this could mean reducing their energy usage to reduce their energy bill. However, the Times-Picayune reports that despite the cost spike, Algiers residents still receive one of the lowest rates in the region. The New Orleans Mosquito, Termite, and Rodent Control Board oversees pest and mosquito and rodent control in Algiers. The board conducts weekly mosquito surveillance checks and spraying for mosquitoes is performed primarily at night using a truck that drives down the streets of the community or an airplane that flies over the community. The board is also responsible for placing mosquito traps around the city in order to test the mosquitoes for certain viruses. Pest management is achieved by applying targeted pesticides around the community only as necessary. Rodent control currently operates on an as-needed basis once they are spotted and not prophylactically like pest and mosquito control. Brookdale Park sits as a somber memorial to the devastation after Hurricane Katrina. The park has so much to offer, however, the vast overgrowth and negligence has deterred visitors. Renovation efforts for Brookdale Park are still in the early stages of development but as successful, efforts have the potential to turn Brechtel Park into a symbol of pride for the Algiers community. The estimated $500,000 cost of renovation to the park has posed some obstacles for the town to overcome in order to progress. As of 2014, the New Orleans City Council stated that Algiers has officially been granted the funding for this project. Community members interested in recreational activities can refer to the New Orleans Recreation Development Commission website. Majority of the activities that the NORDC has scheduled in Algiers are scheduled in Beerman Park. The park has great potential to be a center for health, fun, and sports activities. However, its crime rate and poor aesthetics stand in its way. One can see that it is pretty empty and lacks maintenance as evidenced by the dilapidated signs, rusted fitness trail equipment, and run-down rec center and pool. Algiers has been granted the needed funding and go-ahead to improve Beerman Park. However, there has yet to be a set date for these plans to be officially taken into action. Communities need adequate, safe, and appealing recreational spaces because they serve as safe spaces for teens to hang out. The NOLA for Life Midnight Basketball Program strives to promote safety and mentorship in high crime spots. After Katrina, the program suffered. However, it took off again in 2012 thanks to Mayor Landrieu. From February to April, the league meets at Crocker College Prep School on 2301 Moringa Street. It will be beneficial to implement an extension of the program within the city of Algiers. Although Algiers does not have a small or theater with 
and official city limits, these facilities are located within close proximity, including Oakwood Center Shopping Mall and the AMC West Bank Palace 16. Within Algiers, there are also various private clubs and fitness facilities. However, they require membership fees, and these fees can tower all the way into the $300 range. Park Timbers is a residential community with its own swimming, tennis, and fitness amenities. Aurora Swim and Tennis Club provides its members with swim lessons, tennis clinics, and modern fitness gym. Algiers community members also have the option to join the new UFIT Health Club with memberships starting at $10 per month or the local YMCA. The many recreational areas of Algiers offer a place for the community members to engage in healthy activity. Many of the sites touched on are not used to their full potential, which can be attributed to lack of safety and upkeep, increased crime, and high cost of joining private clubs and fitness centers. As healthcare professionals, it is important that the community-based nurses focus on the importance of available public recreational facilities. Community members need a place they can afford and feel safe while engaging in healthy activity. 2005, following the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, neighborhood representatives and the Orleans Parish School Board founded the Algiers Charter School Association, also known as the ACSA. The association's focus was on the community and providing education for families returning to Algiers after Hurricane Katrina. The ACSA is composed of six schools that are all in the same geographic community, and it is one of the only geocentric charter organizations in the United States. This association was formed to improve schooling in a high-risk population, and it is the largest charter organization in Louisiana, providing education to over 4,500 students from grades pre-K to 12th grade. The community is considered a high-risk population because over 90% of the families in the area are qual area qualify for free or reduced lunches, 22% of the students are special needs learners, 7% are dual language learners, and one out of five ninth grade students are over age. The mission of the ACSA is to deliver and support education excellence in the community of Algiers, Louisiana. The ACSA believes all children are capable of success if exposed to a supportive and challenging learning environment, complete with positive experiences. The main goal is to see the children attending these schools, attend college, obtain a career, and become productive citizens. The six charter schools composing the ACSA include Martin Bierman, Dwight D. Eisenhower, William J. Fisher, McDonough, Number 32, Algiers Technology Academy, and Landry Walker High School. Martin Bierman Charter School Academy of Creative Arts and Sciences is a pre-K to 8th grade school composed of approximately 701 students. The school's vision is focused on learning in, about, and through the arts to have their students grow academically, socially, emotionally, and artistically. Their mission is to educate the community in arts and social sciences so the staff, students, and parents can connect with all cultures of the world and become lifelong learners using critical thinking, creativity, and appreciation of the arts. Martin Bierman offers their students a wide range of extracurricular activities that focus on the creative arts. In 2014, Bierman's school performance score, or SPS, was a 93.3, which is a B average. 76% of all students were at or above their grade school level, and 87% of students that attended this school passed more than six classes in their freshman year of high school. Dwight D. Eisenhower Academy of Global Studies is a pre-K to 8th grade school composed of approximately 784 students. The school's mission is to provide education using a global studies approach to science, technology, math, and engineering in a nurturing atmosphere that permits success. Their faculty is composed of diverse teachers who speak different languages and come from different cultures. This is beneficial because the school provides one-on-one -on -one small group learning sessions for students who speak English as their second language. In 2014, the school scored a 67.7 as their SBS. 55% of all students were at or above their grade school level, and 88% of students passed more than six classes in their freshman year of high school. William J. Fisher Accelerated Academy is a pre-K to 8th grade school that has 645 students enrolled. The mission of the school is to help transform each student into confident, successful, and high-achieving individuals. The school offers a full-time nurse, speech therapist, and social worker. 
The school's special education department includes speech therapy, autistic special education, and a variety of paraprofessional staff. The school's SBS was 56.8 in 2014. 40% of all students were at or above their grade school level, and 77% of students passed more than six classes in their freshman year of high school. McDonough No. 32 Literacy Charter School is an elementary school from pre-K to 8th grade that currently has 583 students enrolled in their program. The mission of this school is to provide academic success through a learning setting that promotes thorough instruction, positive school culture, and involvement of the community. The school's SVS was 64.4 in 2014. 48% of students were above or at their grade level, and 63% of their students passed more than six classes their freshman year of high school. Algiers Technology Academy is a high school with 216 students currently enrolled. The school incorporates a variety of classes that expose students to opportunities in hopes that the students approach careers in technology. These classes include video production, software development, graphic design, web design, and digital recording. The school also gives students an opportunity to retake courses in the RAM Success Program so they can bring up their GPAs, catch up to classmates, and receive credits so that they can graduate on time. The Technology Academy also offers dual enrollment program certifications and college credits. 100% of students that apply to college in their senior year are accepted into college. The school's SBS was 51.7 in 2014. 34% of the students were at or above their grade level, and 19% of students scored higher than an 18 on the ACT. Landry Walker High School is now known as Oliver Perry Walker High and has 1,172 students enrolled. The mission of the school is to provide the students with opportunities to obtain critical thinking and problem-solving skills, expand their understanding, and develop a positive mind toward academic service and health. The school offers accelerated classes to students and also Saturday school, which provides students the ability to obtain credits that they may have previously failed. Career training and certification programs include carpentry, cosmetology, nursing assistance, culinary arts, electrical wiring, and process technology. The school has a special education program that provides teaching to students identified as autistic, mentally disabled, learning disabled, developmentally delayed, traumatic brain injuries, hearing impaired, and speech and language impaired. The high school's SBS was 89.7 in 2014. 67% of students were at or above their grade level, and 53% of students scored higher than an 18 on the ACT. Over 75% of students at the school graduated with a four-year diploma. Another unique high school in the Algiers community is the New Orleans Military Maritime Academy, also known as NOMA. Currently, there are 219 students that attend this school. The school is dedicated to edu education of students grade 9th through 12th grade, despite their previous school experience and background. 69% of students attending NOMA are economically disadvantaged. The educational atmosphere at NOMA is guided by teachers and retired military instructors and focus on prepping each student to attend college and achieve their personal and academic potential. Every student at NOMA is a cadet of the Marine Corps Junior Reserve Officer Training Program. This program uses a disciplined military framework to teach and train student cadets in motivational and leadership skills that they can utilize during school and throughout their lives. The high school's SBS in 2014 was an 83.0, which is a C average, and 86% of the students attending NOMA were at or above their grade level. One college in the Algiers community is Our Lady of Holy Cross. It is a private Catholic college, and their mission is to educate the hearts and minds of their students using innovative teaching, practical reasoning, and communication with others. The school offers undergraduate degrees in allied health, biology, business, counseling, education, English, food science, general studies, history, liberal arts, nursing, social science, and theology. Their graduate programs include master degrees in counseling, education, and theology. New Orleans Regional Transit Authority, RTA, is the primary bus transportation throughout Algiers as well as New Orleans. The route extends throughout Algiers, taking people to where the ferry is located in Algiers Point, 
as well as to the Wiltley Terminal in Gretna. During our windshield assessment, we saw many RTA bus stops throughout Algiers with people waiting for the buses to arrive. The RTA is frequently used in Algiers as a primary means for transportation by many. The Jefferson Transit runs through the Wilty Terminal and takes passengers to the New Orleans Central Bus District in downtown New Orleans. Although the Wilty Terminal is just outside the border of Algiers, many people from Algiers go to this terminal to ride the bus over the Crescent City Connection in order to get to New Orleans. One Bunch Hookup is a transportation company that began in order to help easily transport elderly people. This company is not for emergency transportation, but it is a way to aid in getting elderly people places easier. It is similar to a taxi, but for those in wheelchairs. The bus uses a handicap accessible entry. People can ride the ferry across the river from Algiers to Canal Street in downtown New Orleans. The ferry only boards pedestrians and bicyclers not cars. There is a $2 fee to ride on the ferry. It is not only convenient for Algiers residents, but it is also very scenic and relaxing. The 4th District branch of NOPD is the branch of police that covers the Algiers area. The police station is located within Algiers at 2405 Sanctuary Drive, New Orleans, LA 70114. The commander for the 4th District Station is Sean Ferguson. Algiers Police Advisory Committee meetings are held monthly. Residents are encouraged and welcome to attend to be informed of recent crime incidents as well as be a voice in the commander. The fire department in Algiers, Engine 40, is located at 2500 General de Gaulle Drive. A major safety concern for Algiers is the lack of bike lanes. The main roads within this area do not have bike lanes and many residents were observed riding bikes throughout the area. Another safety concern for this area are the parks. The New Orleans City Council is a legislative branch in charge along with Mayor Landrew of determining the functions, structures, and procedures within Orleans Parish in Louisiana. Algiers resides with Orleans Parish and in turn falls under the legislative control of the council. The responsibilities of the council include developing and approving all local laws that preside over the city, determining the operating and capital budget, overseeing funding for local government events, and regulating the city's public utilities such as land use, zoning matters, and economic development within the city. The New Orleans City Council consists of two council members at large and five district council members. Algiers belongs within District C, which is represented by council member Nadine M. Ramsey. Ramsey has made a name for herself within the New Orleans community for her advancements in advocacy and bettering the education and workforce, workforce in her district. Although Ramsey has brought positivity and growth to the city, some politicians and community members believe that Algiers would thrive more if separated from New Orleans. In March 2015, House Bills 235 and 744 were filed. These two House Bills set the footwork in place for Algiers to become its own city. House Bill 235 consists of allowing the merging of an area within a parish and the development of that area's own boundary separate from the rest of the parish. The two bills, however, did not pass. The Algiers Economic Development Foundation, AEDF, is a society made up of assorted community and business leaders in Algiers, whose primary focus is on economic growth and improving the quality of life for those who live in Algiers. AEDF works with the Algiers business community, civic and community partners, elected officials, and regional partners to develop business initiatives that aid in further development in businesses and to create opportunities that allow residents to thrive and grow. For 23 years, the foundation has worked with the Algiers community, renovating old businesses, building new businesses, and introducing new areas of revenue to the city and its residents. Algiers has numerous resources which contributes to their communication, including a public library, postal services, local cafes, newspapers, and social media. Algiers Regional Branch Library is located on Holiday Drive. Activities are scheduled each week, such as story time, Kids Corner, puppet shows, citizenship classes, and computer classes. 
The United States Post Office is located on MacArthur Boulevard. The next closest post office is located in Araby. Bocage Civic Association is a community group that consists of Bocage subdivision residents. The group has a website where they post community information updates and news about their subdivision. The newspaper Algiers receives is the Times Picayune and the Advocate. Recently, in August 2015, the first issue of the Bazette newsletter was posted where Martin Berman High School alums were able to stay in touch with friends and upcoming activities such as class reunions. Alums include members of the class 1931 to 1970. Local cafes, businesses, and restaurants such as Chubby's Fried Chicken and the Olive Branch serve as communication headquarters for the locals. Algiers has a Facebook page where members post local news and information such as construction work, crime, and promotion of businesses. The city of Algiers does not contain a hospital within its city limits, but there are two hospitals on the West Bank that the residents of Algiers use. First being the West Bank Oshner, which is a 180 person bed providing acute medical and surgical care. This hospital is located on Bell Chase Highway in Gretna, Louisiana. The second hospital is West Jefferson Hospital. This is a 435 bed hospital that is located on Medical Center Boulevard, Marrero, Louisiana. The residents of Algiers have many other services available to them. Most of these other services are run by local doctors and nurse practitioners. Some examples are the urgent care, dental offices, dialysis clinics, and St. Luke's Medical Center, which is a behavioral health facility. One need that Algiers has is the need for a homeless shelter to help their homeless population. Another important resource available to Algiers is the Carr Family Pharmacy. This pharmacy has been serving the community for 30 years and they pride themselves on the ability to compound medication for their patients. The city of Algiers has many health and social services available to their community. One of the great services is the Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, also known as the WIC program. This program provides nutrition to women who are pregnant, breastfeeding, or postpartum, and also to children who are five years of age and younger. This program provides women with proper equipment, such as breast pumps, and nutrition necessary to raise their children in a healthy, nutritional environment. Some examples of food that the women and children are given from this program are milk, cheese, juice, eggs, beans, bread, rice, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, infant formula, and cereal. To be considered eligible for the WIC program, you must be pregnant, breastfeeding until the infant reaches one year, an infant or child as old as five years old. You must also be a Louisiana resident with a nutritional problem and meet the income requirements. To prove your income, typically a pay stub or tax record, proof of Social Security are provided. <clears throat> you need a proof of living location from a rent receipt you also need proof of identification from a driver's license, birth certificate, or a work ID. In income requirements are laid out in a chart available online. In the beginning, there was a feeling of uneasiness in our group because we knew we were about to step out of our comfort zone. We knew that we were going into a community, asking community members, local business owners and residents, what they thought of their community. We were going to assess their roads and different things within their community. We were not sure how we were going to split up the group, and we didn't know how these community members were going to receive us. Most of the community members we spoke with were kind and willing to share information. From spending time in the community, our group feels we have increased our knowledge of patient care. We have realized the importance of understanding where an individual lives and the resources they have available to them. A community's resources plays an important role in how a patient is taught how to take care of themselves and what resources we make sure patients get in touch with. This community experience can not be learned in a classroom and it will influence our nursing practice from here on out. Our group was able to function at an optimal level and handle the workload that was placed from lecture and practicum. 
All group members played an important part in the assessment of the community and contributed equally to the paper and presentation. As a group, we collaborated and established three community diagnoses with interventions for Algiers. Inadequate maintenance of roads related to ineffective prioritization of funding as evidenced by potholes, lack of upkeep, resident interviews, and decreased community involvement. The Healthy People 2020 goal that relates to this diagnosis is to improve health-related quality of life and well-being for all individuals. Surveillance at the individual level includes collecting data by interviewing residents about roads and car damage due to potholes. Community organizing at the individual level include developing relationships and advocating with members in order to assess which roads the residents want improved in order to prioritize construction based on the desires of the residents. Collaboration at the community level includes discussing potential funding with local politicians in order to determine the availability of financial resources for the rebuilding of the roads and the community groups identified as most in need of repairs. Inadequate use of green space related to city planning as evidenced by poorly maintained grounds, decreased community involvement, resident interviews, and increased crime. The Healthy People 2020 goal that relates to this diagnosis is increase the quality, availability, and effectiveness of educational and community-based programs designed to prevent disease and injury, improve health, and enhance quality of life. Surveillance and consultation at the community level include to consult with local politicians to identify current priorities of city funding to determine how much funding is used to, to provide security in public green spaces such as parks. Community organizing at the community level include organizing a volunteer community to provide maintenance for the parks. Advocacy and community organizing at the community level include to advocate for community use of the parks via scheduled events organized by the volunteer committee. Our last diagnosis is safety risk as evidenced by increased crime, sidewalk conditions, resident interviews, and absence of bike lanes. The Healthy People 2020 goal related to this diagnosis is to prevent injuries and violence and reduce their consequences. Outreach at the individual level can be done by consulting the neighborhood watch and identifying areas of concern in regards to crime rates. Collaboration at the community level includes collaborating with local authorities such as the fire department to advocate bike safety of adults and children. Advocacy at the individual level by advocating for the community residents to investigate affordable methods of sidewalk construction.